Unlike the government's JTF, which comprises of troops from all over Nigeria, the civilian JTF mainly consists of locals in their teens and twenties who mount checkpoints and conduct searches to complement the efforts of the military and flush out Boko Haram fighters in their communities. They are said to have better knowledge of the theater of war and are reportedly better at identifying insurgents than the Nigerian troops. The women amongst them frisk women at checkpoints, something male soldiers could not do for obvious reasons. They are credited with helping to achieve a safer meduguri, but they have suffered a lot of casualties lately in the hands of the better armed terrorists who target them for offering support to soldiers. Cut our people, they damage our people. That's why we did it, just reach us. He pay us. The reason why we say we can go into out to cut them one by one, like how they will take cut grass over instead of bush. We are fighting against Boko Haram because we are tired of all the killings. We want the government to provide uniforms and ID cards for us. The civilian JTO has similarities with vigilante groups or urban political thugs that emerged in the northeast and some other parts of the country when Nigeria returned to multi-party democracy in 1999. What is even more frightening is the call to equip them with sophisticated assault weapons, for it may be difficult to disarm them in future. The security of the country is clearly defined in the constitution and uh, there are recognized organizations and institutions that deals with every aspect of the security of this country. Those bodies are the only bodies recognized to be armed. I think they should be closely monitored only to the extent of giving information and identifying the suspects. You know, and they should, I think the security agencies should also learn to cover them up. They, they are too exposed. They are too exposed because if you say this as your civilian JTF and everybody know them as JTF, natural, whether they are armed or they are not armed, they become natural targets for the terrorists. When civilians start taking the law into their hands and indulge in vigilance activities, then isn't the country a hair's breath away from total anarchy? A retired army colonel provides an answer. I think systematically the people that gather them together we also send them to where they belong. How do you demobilize the Niger Delta militants? <laughs> you, I mean, you have to demobilize them gradually, send them back to school, you know, get them employed somewhere else. But you can make use of their local knowledge for intelligence in support of the police, intelligence, you know. But not for them to come out in combat. What I'm against is they are coming out in combat, but the moment you get in some people, into combat, it is very, very difficult to decombat somebody. Once the blood has been shed, once they have a taste of it, it is a problem. Civilian JTF stop people and conduct searches on them. If they suspect they are Boko Haram members, it is said that they also summarily execute suspects. Such mood of justice cannot be deemed appropriate. Isn't this promoting a circle of vendetta and revenge? The genesis of this um, uh, mili militarization, militancy in Nigeria is as a result of the fact that politicians armed some youths in the Niger Delta and at the end of the day it was difficult to retrieve these arms from them. And so when you find a hungry man, when a hungry man finds you know, guns in his hands, he will do anything with them. We, you know, when, when you hear them talk of gun control in America, if you say you want to control guns in Nigeria, that's a laughable thing. We've seen the police seize catches of ammunition here and there, but can we really account that, uh, to the fact that there are X number of guns in Nigeria? When civilian JTF are done with fishing and flushing out Boko Haram, what will they do? Peacefully disarm or seek out another target? Ivy Kano, TVC News, Lagos.